Hey, what up, Street Talks? There, Kim. All right, so a thought. Back to basics. So I kind of like this mentality where every day you're a beginner, every day is a fresh new start, and kind of like Calvin and Hobbes, every day is a fresh new slate of slow, snow. So there's lots of different philosophies they talk about, like you know, tablo rasa. Um, um, you know, blank slate, carte blanche, and stuff like that. And the general gist is, you know, once you become an expert or a master in anything, then it becomes a little depressing because you stop seeing opportunities. You see kind of more about like limitations, and it's generally discouraging because rather than using that opportunity to think of new things and stuff like that, you end up starting to see just like uh, limits and boundaries. And that's just generally depressing because it prevents us from, you know, innovating and starting things anew. So beginner's mind seems to be quite uh, adept here or child's mind. So thinking about like um, Steve Jobs, his legacy and why I'm so inspired by him, the, the interesting thing is, it's the moments of the intense pain and suffering and difficult times where it actually tests you and tempers you and it, it actually transforms you into becoming who you need to become. So for example, it wasn't until after he got exiled from Apple and then made his uh, heroic return where he made most of his greatest innovations in terms of like, you know, iPhone, iPad, the iPod, you remember that, right, the iPod? So, it seems, you know, like, to obviously during the time where Steve Jobs got exiled from Apple, it was probably one of the most sad, depressing things of his life. But in actuality, it probably ended up being one of the best things that could ever happen to him because that was, that's essentially what gave him the opportunity to really reflect on his life, what he really wanted, and stuff like that, and really kind of give him the chance to to think more critically about, I guess, his life and what was important to him. And also something that I try to do a lot too is like kind of memento mori, remembering that like you must die and you will die. Uh, even our friend Mr. Rogers, he died pretty early, like in his early 70s because he had like stomach cancer or something. And so it's also really sad too because, you know, life is short, life is limited and I really do think that the best life is the life of the maximal courage where you're really only pursuing what you personally care about and really caring less about what other people tend to think and what other people want of you and thinking so like think less about what other people want from you and think more about what you want from yourself seems like um, kind of a, a good measure of uh, living so for myself I essentially, I mean, there's there's lots of things I want to do while I'm still alive, and there's still a lot of things I have uh, left undone, which is kind of a nice thought. Uh, first and foremost, I think there's still so much innovation that has yet been discovered or done in uh, blogging and vlogging and stuff like that. So I feel like there's huge new opportunities that are still untapped, and it's also my personal pursuit to try to figure out some new sort of limits to blogging, vlogging, digital technologies, news media, whatever, in, um, in a much more interesting way. Also, another problem that I kind of want to start working on is how, essentially, how can people make money on the internet that doesn't rely on just advertising? I think, I mean, obviously advertising is effective and it works, uh, or else the whole economy wouldn't be working the way it is right now, but now, Seems like a very interesting time because everything is kind of getting upended right now. And then the, the thing that's very interesting with innovation is you're not going to innovate unless you're actually forced to do so. Like nobody, you know, true. I think true innovation happens uh, out of necessity and need. Like, you're not just going to be sitting on your butt and being all cozy and stuff like that. And like, oh, I'm going to innovate something new. It's, it's actually more of like something that's needs to, you need to have an experience or um, 
a thing that happened to you that's so difficult that it forces you to innovate. So that's one of my thoughts. Whoa, check out this tree. Like. And the bonsai vibes. So, yeah, so I, I think I think in life, um, so that's that's another huge problem I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about a lot right now is how can one make money on the internet that doesn't rely on advertising? I mean, one thought that I think is pretty good is like online workshops or online seminars or things that are done over the internet which are live that actually allow for uh, interaction between the, the host and the audience. Oh, check out these trees. And also, like, one of my interests is, so, if you think about, man, it's kind of crazy, like, websites are essentially the world's ultimate platform for digital expression, digital uh, arts, and, well, look how green this is. you think about a website, it's probably the world's ultimate form of digital, um, of just artistic expression because you have a fucking infinite canvas where you could just kind of splay and display all of your creative ideas and artworks with infinite space. It's like, you know, everyone wants to be shown in a gallery. I'm like, no, dude, make, like, make your own website. Like, it's so basic, but it's really, an insanely effective form to just kind of display your artworks. So I think also another form of uh, thinking about back to basics, it, it, you know, when you're a kid, I think, or even when you're younger, I think most people tend to have a pretty good BS detector. They're just like, what? Like, y'all, you stupid adults, like, talking all this, like, fancy people talk and you're talking a bunch of BS. Like, I kind of don't get it. And so you, over time, you kind of learn this like secret Illuminati like talk and then you gotta be into the know with like certain like buzzwords, right? And the thing is like buzzwords kind of come and go and it's all more about like signaling about like how intelligent or woke you are. So that's at least one of the things that's a little bit upsetting to me about the whole like woke culture is that it actually, it's not really open-minded. It's kind of more mean than anything because if you're not in the know with the whole woke culture or the woke literature or the woke terminologies, then you're kind of ostracized for it and you're kind of like punished for it by being, you know, criticized and critiqued by others. So I think generally speaking, to have the mind of a child, to have that pure, innocent mind where you're just kind of like fresh to new ideas and thoughts and stuff like that, seems to be one of the best ways that we could live life. So another hobby, so I got these, you know, these little shark shoes, and I like to walk on these uneven surfaces or rocks. It actually feels really good for my legs, my hips, my back, and it looks like this is actually what's kept me in good health. And also it's like a free massage for the bottom of my feet, which is uh, pretty fun. So, so yeah, so generally what I would recommend is with everything in life, every single day is a new day. It's a, a new fresh start to the day for you to think, for you to wonder, for you to uh, challenge, for you to question. And I think the principle of life is uh, growth. And certainly when it comes to knowledge and information and stuff like that, it's good to have a broad base to, to build our ideas off of. But essentially don't let your mind, your soul get sullied by, you know, kind of like nonsensical things that a lot of people tend to do. Um, that a lot of people tend to do in terms of just trying to like talk down on you, trying to belittle you, making you feel smaller. Um, because yeah, I think, you's, I think you're dope, you're great, you're an individual who has lots of potential and you're somebody who, you know, I don't think you should uh, let yourself get bullied by 
other people. And that's actually the, the worst thing in today's society is that a lot of these great innovative thinkers tend to get bullied by others. And even one of the things that I really detested early on is essentially how there's always been like a barrier or a wall towards like um, some sort of like between the elites and the, the rest of us, I suppose. And yeah, so uh, ultimately what I believe in is op open information, open knowledge, um, kind of a, like a little bit more radical in, in terms of uh, that. And uh, yeah, and I believe in the collective flourishing of humankind, mankind. And it's so funny, because even this notion of having a mission statement is such a, it's quite a modern one, I think, if I think about the ancients. Essentially, the ancients were more interested in, like, knowledge, wisdom, pursuit of wisdom. And if I think about the really great philosophers of the past, what did they do? They spend all their days pretty much um, walking, thinking, talking to people, writing books, giving lectures, and stuff like that. And in terms of whose work has actually lasted over the years, it does seem that the works of the philosophers have been the most robust uh, over time. So we still read Socrates, Plato, all those old school dudes. Um, and even back then, the arts was generally seen with scorn, like, um, seen with kind of suspicion and the arts were seen as like superfluous or unimportant. But now it seems in today's modern society, arts is of extreme importance. And for us as digital creators and digital artists, it's so funny, it's like a, a very simple idea, right? Like a digital artist. You're like, yeah, you're a digital artist. I'm a digital blogger. Anything digital, I think is good. So I've been thinking more about digital technologies I rewatched the original Tron, uh, which was kind of a uh, good vibes. Even think about the Matrix and stuff like that. So think about how you could best harness all these phenomenal digital technologies at your hand. Maybe barbell between nature and digital to become the most epic po artist possible.